It was an amazing year for video games, and it all comes down to this. X Play's Best of 2011 awards start right now. Seven blockbuster games vie for the title. Here we go again! Batman Arkham City. This is gonna hurt. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Gears of War 3. Yeah! L.A. Noir. Portal 2. Saints Row the Third and Super Mario 3D Land. Only one to be X Play's 2011 Game of the Year. And a big announcement about the future of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. It all comes down to this. X Play's Best of 2011 Awards starts right now. Hello and welcome to X Play's Best of 2011 Awards Special, the source of many hurt feelings. I'm Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. Now, today we're going to recognize the year's very best games, give out a ton of awards, and then hope the check's clear. Oh, hold on. That's the other award oh. show. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, all of today's nominees and winners were decided by the editorial team of X Play and G4TV.com. It was a very dramatic process that was full of yelling, shouting, and name calling. It was like a session of Congress, except that we actually got something done. To qualify, the games had to be released between December 14th, 2010, and December 14th, 2011. And they had to be good, unlike Duke Nukem Forever. See you at the Mullet's Gearbox. Let's get to our first award. Here are the nominees for Best Shooter. Battlefield 3. Large battle zones and action ranging from infantry combat to land and air vehicle assaults will keep you glued to the addictive multiplayer. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Try not to die this time. The epic trilogy wraps up with a satisfying campaign and an even more refined iteration of the online shooting beloved by millions. Gears of War 3. Okay, let's roll. The total package shooter with campaign, co-op, and competitive modes that offer astounding amounts of content. Rage. It ain't safe here, get in. The house that Doom built delivers silky smooth post-apocalyptic shooting and explosive car combat. Resistance 3. Our fortunes have turned. Humanity's last stand against the Chimera delivers with a gripping campaign and the best multiplayer in the series. And the winner is Gears of War 3, which is also up for Game of the Year. Now this is the total package. A great campaign, co-op, horde mode, beast mode, and competitive multiplayer. Here to accept the award is Epic Games Design Director Cliff Lazinski. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. This actually is huge for us. I mean, when we set out to make the game, we were looking at the state of the market, and in order for gamers to buy a game that's $60, you need to have a full package. It needs to be a suite, right? And especially consider the competition that was out this year. I mean, from Call of Duty to Uncharted to Battlefield, it's where my mind's completely blown. So thank you so, so much. What did you learn from Gears 1 and 2 that you put into Gears 3? Uh, well, I've always said the online needs to work, right? And with this holiday season, I've joked that this holiday season is like Reservoir Dogs at the end of it where everybody has guns pointed yes, at each yes. other, right? <laughs> it's a bloodbath out there. And we knew, like, a lot of great games, especially the third ones in the series, were coming out. And we had to have, you know, Horde Mode 2. We had to have beast mode. We had to have an online that worked with dedicated servers. And we had to have a great campaign that was playable fully one to four players. That was what we needed for the full package. So, yeah, thank you so much. Now, um, were you nervous about the game coming out when it did? I mean, there were a lot of games uh, this holiday season. Did you find the extra time helpful, or was it nerve-wracking? Well, originally it was supposed to come out earlier, actually, in April, right? And that allowed us to do the beta, which was huge for us, because whenever you put an online game out there, there's always issues, right? Dedicated servers being up and down. I mean, it's really like Apollo 13, like you're going around the dark side of the moon, and your programmers are like, I don't know why people can't get on the servers, and they're like, figure it out, they're going to go to another game. And thankfully, we were able to iron all that out between Microsoft, the servers, our programmers, and have a really, really smooth launch, thanks to the beta. Now, uh, I, I think what does distinguish this franchise and this game in particular from a lot of the other shooters with competitive multiplayer and co-op out there is how strong the campaign is. You know, yeah. there's a story, there's a lot of fans of these characters. Um, I mean, was, was it interesting for you, having lived with these characters for so long, kind of realizing that maybe you're not always saying goodbye to them, but you're really closing out quite a big story? We wanted this to really feel like its own one, two, and three kind of contained trilogy, right? We didn't, if you finish the game, the, after the credits, there's no just like, but wait, something else is coming, right? It always feels cheap to me as a gamer, right? So we wanted to kind of sit in your shelf, Gears 1, 2, and 3, and hey, if we were to do something else, we could kind of go in a different direction, maybe. Well, I would like to say congratulations, and we yes. cannot wait to see what you guys do next. Um, do you have anything to say to the Gears fans out there? Uh, thank you, first and foremost, for sticking with us through all of the years. Your support means the world to us, and hopefully we'll be able to make another Gears game someday soon. All right, Cliff, you earned it. Thank you so much. Let's send it over to Blair.
Thank you guys and congratulations Cliff and that unsung bearded hero Rod Ferguson and everybody else over at Epic. Now we love a solid single player campaign but those are few and far between these days. That's because it really is all about the online play. If you don't have multiplayer your game is worthless. At least that's what the suits in the marketing departments think. Here are the best competitive multiplayer titles. Assassin's Creed Revelations. Revenge. New game types and abilities add even more variety to the most unique multiplayer on the shelves today. Battlefield 3. The objective has been neutralized. The latest installment of DICE's excellent franchise offers online combat on a scale unmatched by the competition. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. You're clear to proceed. The fast-paced freneticism returns with awesome new perks in the sleep-destroying Kill Confirmed mode. Dark Souls. This is your fate. The ultimate dungeon crawling enemy is other players. They can invade your world to kill you in this dark and ultra challenging RPG. Gears of War 3. The war between the Locust and the Cog finally gets dedicated servers. Shotgun diving has never been better. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. There is a reason why it's the most played game on Xbox Live, because it works in every way, and you want to keep leveling up. And here to accept the award is Infinity Ward creative strategist, Mr. Robert Bowling. Ta Robert, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Thank uh, I'll you so say much. it, Robert. First thing we talked about in the past, creative strategist, not a real title. <laughs> not a real position in Infinity Ward. I have been seeing more of them pop up in the industry. <laughs> that means trendsetter. <laughs> And, uh, and you could, you're also now the award receiverist yeah, for Infinity Ward as well. Yeah, I'm adding my title. Yes, congratulations. Uh, obviously, massive, massive sales numbers yeah. for this game. But I know the important stuff for you guys is what you did on the multiplayer front, all the new things you brought to the table in this franchise. Yes, definitely. Because multiplayer is where you know your most vocal audience is, and that's <laughs> what matters most. It's great that we sell a lot because that means our community is bigger. But what those guys are saying online, what they're saying when they're playing, that's what matters most. That's why awards like this mean the most to us, because it means people are putting hours in. They're enjoying it, because that is the biggest taste test for a game is, are people playing it? And yes, they are. Yep. Do you spend a lot of times on the forums reading what people have to say? Endless amount of times. Forums, Twitters, I mean, we get endless amounts of messages from our fans. I mean, I, I think we are instantly connected in the sense of as soon as people play, they're sending us messages in between matches. And we are a couple weeks out from, from the game's launch now, or even a month or so out yep. right now. And again, a tremendous success. Um, anything that you guys are hearing that you're like, wow, that's a really great idea. We wish maybe we could have put that in the game. Or, you know, that's something that we're going to release really soon in some DLC or something like that. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And what's really cool is since we have such the advanced private match options, we've been noticing seeing a lot of user created game modes that in the next coming weeks we're going to be adding to the public playlist and multiplayer. Nice. So be looking out for that. We haven't announced it yet, but we're going to be adding some in for the holiday, brand new modes that the users created that we adapted, made more polish and are putting into the game. All right, well, we want to say congratulations. Now, do you have anything that you want to say um, to the fans at home? Oh, thank you so much. Just make sure, uh, you know, if you have feedback, if you're playing the game, let us know because obviously that stuff impacts our design decisions. They are just as important in the design process as anybody else. All right. Well, look, congratulations again on the award. And as you said, you're going to be announcing that you're releasing the fan stuff. But yeah. technically, you just announced it on our show. So thank you so much for that exclusive content that we got just now <laughs> on our Best of the Year show. Thank you, sir. Let's send it over to Adam for our next category. Thank you, guys. Now, if you don't like playing games online against anonymous bigots and creeps, why not play with the horrible people you know in real life? Here are the best multiplayer co-op titles. Dance Central 2. You can't argue with scores like that. Gears of War 3. Elo Milo. Portal 2. Saints Row the Third. And the winner is Portal 2, which is the first award for this Game of the Year nominee. Um, you know, it, it really is a unique type of co-op, because it's not so much, hey, did they make the single player campaign actually incorporate more than one player? This is just an entirely separate game. Let's head it over <laughs> to Blair. After years of alcohol abuse, professional oil wrestling, and eating southern cuisine, my body is in shambles. Matter of fact, the reason my left hand is in my pocket is because I can't feel this side of my body. Much less play things like organized sports. But that's what video games are for. Here are the nominees for the best sports game. 
FIFA 12. Best shot, best goal. Greatly improved defensive tools and a deep control scheme make this one of the best soccer games ever. MLB 11, the show. This ball has a chance and it is gone. Sony's exceptional baseball franchise is yet again the best virtual representation of America's favorite pastime. NBA 2K12. In addition to incredible controls and eerily realistic visuals, this year's installment adds new eras with their own distinctive look and feel. NHL 12. Improved teammate AI and goalie interaction make for hours of joyful pain infliction on the ice. WWE 12. That was awesome! Revamped, well, everything, and insane amounts of customization add up to the greatest wrestling game we've ever played. And the winner is NBA 2K12. That is so good. And that's actually a repeat yes. for 2K Sports, who improved on their already incredible game that won this category last year. And they'll keep winning if they continue to make the big bold changes to the series. Now, how many sports franchises let you play classic games in black and white? Because back then, life was in black and white. Yeah. Fun fact, you guys didn't know that, did you? Uh, after the break, we're going to reveal the winners for best role-playing game, best fighting game, and the one that you guys decided on in G4TV.com's video game deathmatch, the Viewer's Choice Award. It's all leading up to the big one, Game of the Year. We're going to make you stick around till the end of the show for that one. We'll be right back. Guess what? We have got another award to give away right now. Our award for best trailer goes to Dead Island. X-Play's best of 2011 award special will continue in just a minute. Hated and feared by a world they've sworn to protect. You're dead, freak. Fighting for good, but far from perfect. Lady, the problem isn't in my pants. No! X-Men, all new tomorrow at 11. And don't miss Blade, premiering January 13th, only on G4. Welcome back. If your home is beginning to accumulate a hoarders-like level of clutter, maybe downloadable games are the way to go. Sure. I mean, they're reasonably priced, they're easy to buy, and the only space they'll be taking up is on your hard drive. And here are the nominees for Best Downloadable Game. Bastion. Good thing the windbags don't know. Kids fresh out of health tonics. Infamous Festival of Blood. You're kind of badass as a vampire. Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. Iron Brigade. Stacking. Morgan is excited about this. The I winner am. is stacking. This game might not have the flashiest graphics or a ridiculous amount of content, but it has a unique style and a great concept. Here to accept the award is Double Fine's Tim Schafer and Lee Petty. They actually chose to send in a video because something happened between us and I We're can't be around We're not supposed to talk about the restraining yes. order, so let's just watch it. Yeah. Stacking is the best. I'd like to thank everyone at x -Blade for making stacking the best downloadable game of the year. Yeah. I don't think it could get any better than this. Well, I can think of one way to get better. Well, there's a seductive idea. Oh, yeah, big boy? Let's get it on. Oh. <laughs> you guys have the conference room? I've been here like an hour. Uh, we're just about finished. Leave it to Double Fine to take this oblique gift from my great grandmother 20 years ago and finally make it charming. Our next category is the personal favorite, role playing games. They're the only way I can pretend to be someone else without having to kill them and steal their identities. Too messy. Here's our short list Dark Souls. What do we have here? A deep combat system, ultra-challenging enemies, and an innovative multiplayer component make this an incredibly rewarding game. Deus Ex Human Revolution. I'll look into it. Sci-fi dystopianism at its finest, and an excellent resurrection of the classic first-person RPG franchise. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. 
Damn, that dragon doesn't give up easy. The sprawling world and gargantuan amount of content kept us playing until long into the night. Every night. Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. We're good to go! A charming and well-written JRPG that gave us a reason to dust off that PSP one more time. The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. This I like! A believable world and memorable characters mesh with gorgeous visuals to draw us into this dark and surprisingly mature fantasy RPG. And the winner is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. That is the first award for this Game of the Year nominee. Not the biggest surprise no, in this and, category. And, and you know, this is best RPG, and I think one thing that this game really does so remarkably is the role playing. Mm -hmm. Like, the, 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 the amount of opportunities for you as the player to build a character as you so choose and play the game as you so choose is, is quite phenomenal. Right, and outside of the water cooler experiences that we've all had different uh, versions of, the level of immersion is the thing that, that uh, at its foundation right. that we all bring up. It's so immersive. In a, in a role playing game, that level of immersion is what you want. For the number of hours that you can spend in that game, you also need to have a compelling reason to. And I think that's where Skyrim, like the, the world of Skyrim, is quite inviting to like, hey, yeah, I'll just give up on every other aspect of life. Right, and the fact that they also, and we brought this up in the past when we had this conversation, they kind of turned the whole um, how to level up in an RPG on its head. Like they tried something different as well with the, uh, with really like the perk system being the reason to level up your character, not committing points on such a Right, level not making thing. the grind something that becomes your focal point. Yeah. Like, no, play the game and it will all happen in, in due course. Yeah, so great job, Bethesda. You guys are really good at RPGs. Let's send it over to Morgan. Some years, the fighting game category gets put on the chopping block because there's not enough nominees. Well, last year, we only had three. But thanks to a resurgence in the fighting scene, we have got a full roster this year. Here are the five best. The King of Fighters 13. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds. Mortal Kombat. Street Fighter 3, Third Strike Online Edition. Super Street Fighter 4, Arcade Edition. And the winner is Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds. If you manage to not have a seizure while playing, you're going to clearly see that this game will be a staple at EVO tournaments for years to come. Or the new version of it that came out, what, three weeks ago. All right, let's head over to Blair for our next category. This one features games that are easy on the eyes. Art direction has come a long way since the days of Snake or Combat. We went from colors and blocks that suggest the thing on the screen is a tank to fully realized immersive worlds. Here are the five games on our short list for art direction. Alice Madness Returns. A new law reigns in this Wonderland, Alice. In addition to Alice's fabulous ensemble of dresses, Wonderland has dark and twisted surprises around every corner. Batman Arkham City. What the hell are you doing here? Gotham has never looked better or more sinister. Every inch of Arkham City builds atmosphere and tells a story. El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron. The trippiest take on an Old Testament story ever. The variety and creativity on display is jaw-dropping. Portal 2. You did find a portal gun! Oh, the... Do you know what? It just goes to show people with brain damage are the real heroes. From the incredible opening sequence to the overgrown test chambers to the shifting modular plates, extreme care and talent is evident in every frame. Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. I'm losing the plot here. Nate's adventures take him from the streets of London to forgotten ruins, and it all feels so real you can smell the dust in the air. And the winner is Batman Arkham City. Woo! Woo! Love that game. The oddest celebration ever. I'm so excited about it. Really, the saddest thing about this game is that that city is not a real place that I can visit in real life. I walk around LA wishing that they were uh, ringing payphones for me to pick up all the time, because Zaz is a real person and he's killing people, and we need to acknowledge that. Okay. Um, That's true. 
It is a nice open world design. Mm -hmm. uh, you obviously really like the way it feels yes. and it brings you into uh, into the world. Right. It also has a lot of detail, which is nice. Right, and something that we've talked about both internally and then on the show, even if you're not a Batman fan, you really do now know what it feels like to be Batman, and that is super cool. All right, Batman is still in the running for a ton of awards, including Best Action Adventure and the one that we're giving away at the end of the yep. show, right? Uh, what is that one again? Oh, yeah, Game of the Year. Uh, but you know what? I think we should just dish out some more winners right now. I like that idea. Okay. We are giving the award for best soundtrack to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Yeah, it's the first orchestral soundtrack in a Zelda game, and it is absolutely incredible. And we're giving the award for best mobile game to Epic's Infinity Blade 2. You are not going to find a better looking mobile game. I mean, it looks, it looks better than some console games. And we're giving the award for best motion control game to Dance Central 2. Yes? They made an even better version of the best game for Connect. The team from Harmonix couldn't be here in person, so they sent us this video. Thanks from everyone at Harmonix for naming Dance Central 2 the best motion game of 2011. We're so happy that fans from around the world have hit the dance floor with us. We've come a long way from rocking to dancing, and like gamers everywhere, we've learned some serious dance moves along the way. Hit it. Oh, it's great to play a motion game that makes you look that good. Our legal team has advised me to not respond to that video. So <laughs> I won't. Probably a good yes. idea. Coming up, we'll reveal our picks for best writing. Most of the games in this category make narrative sense, and for this industry, that in and of itself is a huge win. Yes, plus we are going to reveal our choices for most original game and best animation. X Play's best of 2011 special returns right after this. Welcome back to x -Play's Best of 2011 Award Special. Okay, our next category is Best Animation. Now, if this were the Oscars, this award would go to whatever Pixar did, even if it was poop. Here are the five games that made our shortlist. Assassin's Creed Revelations. Fluid movement and combat are hallmarks of this series, but we have to give special mention to Ezio's brutal kills with the new hook play. Batman Arkham City. This place is dangerous. I like it. The Dark Knight's punches, kicks, leaps, and glides are smooth and powerful, and his foes are equally impressive. <laughs> NBA 2K12. Knock it down! Is it a real NBA broadcast or 2K Sports' latest masterpiece? Bet you had to look twice to be sure. Rage. No one walks out alive. A frame rate running at a silky 60 frames per second and matching physics calculations are the secret to its jaw-dropping combat animation. Rayman Origin. Oh, Ray. Every frame of this platforming adventure drips with character and style. And the winner is NBA 2K12. Like the award for best sports game, 2K took home this award also last year. Yes, and it's because the same thing happens every time you expose someone new to the game. They walk in the room, glance at the screen, and assume you're watching a live TV broadcast. It really looks that good. Yes. All right, Blair, you have our next category. Video game writing can be really difficult because all too often design dictates the story. In bad scenarios, the writer doesn't get to sit down and dream up the game. They're actually just forced to make sense of predetermined levels and shoehorn in some cutscenes and some dialogue when they can but sometimes it really works, and when it does, it takes games to the next level. Here are our nominees for Best Writing. Batman Arkham City. Like it? Who wouldn't? Rocksteady's drum tight story evokes the classic animated series while providing a new spin on familiar characters. L.A. Noir. You're under arrest, Schroeder. Crackling dialogue sells the setting of this hard-boiled yarn about corruption and justice in the City of Angels. <laughs> Portal 2. Catch me, get out! Ow. The scribes at Valve make comedy look easy with their laugh-out-loud funny masterpiece of a script. You might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. Saints Row the Third. <laughs> Volition throws caution and convention out the window with a wild and fearless tale of our favorite video gangsters. Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Leave it to you to find a friggin' jungle in the middle of France. High adventure and believable characters are Uncharted's specialty, and the third installment does not disappoint. 
And the winner is Portal 2, its second award of the day. Yeah, this game could have just been harder puzzles and more GLaDOS humor, and right. it would have sold a few copies. Just a few. Just a few, <laughs> but Valve really did go above and beyond here and make a great new game. Now, the fine folks at Valve are too busy making Half-Life 3. And we're just hoping here. We have no actual information on that. Uh, but they can't be in here in person, so they sent us a video. Hey, everyone at G4 TV. Chef Falasek and Eric Wolpoff from Valve. And we just want to say what a huge honor it is to win Game of the Year. Uh, it's for writing. That's pretty good, too. Thanks. Our next group of games are all noteworthy for one reason. They put your sound system to work and cause neighbors to make complaints because of explosions, gunfire, and bloody murder. They are nominees for Best Sound Design. Batman Arkham City. It's the freaking Bat! Battlefield 3. Dead Space 2. The Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim. Portal 2. And the winner is Battlefield 3. DICE's audio work is head and shoulders above everyone in the industry. It reinforces my fear of guns, right. war, and everything. Let's hand it over to Blair. That's why we actually shoot this show in Adam's house, because he's scared of everything. If you think Hollywood's guilty of spitting out sequels, remakes, and rehashes, it's nothing compared to how guilty the video game industry is. Creating original titles is a huge gamble, and failing means studios can actually go bye-bye. Thankfully, there are still a few risk takers out there, so here are the nominees for most original game. Catherine. You must like what you see. We don't know how someone managed to get a puzzle game about unfaithfulness and sheep made, but we're glad they did. L.A. Noir. Happy hunting. Rockstar stays true to the roots of the titular genre and creates a police procedural that takes its time and sets its own pace. Minecraft. <laughs> Playing with blocks taken to a crazy, beautiful extreme. The balance of pure creativity with survival elements is like nothing we've played before. Stacking. An action puzzle game starring Russian nesting dolls. Why didn't we think of that? Oh, right, because we're not creative geniuses. Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery. With clever puzzles, offbeat retro visuals, and Jim Guthrie's unforgettable soundtrack, this sings like no other title this year. And the winner is Minecraft. Now, the game would have probably been nominated in its earlier incarnations, but now we can give it an award since it's now finally, officially, officially done. Accepting the award is the person that has the best job title in the world, Director of Fun at Mojang, Lydia Winners. Hi everyone, thank you so much. On behalf of Mojang, I'm here to accept the award for Minecraft for Most Original Game. We have just been absolutely blown away by the community support, and it's amazing to see that our game is going into helping families and actual building projects and education, and without Notch and Jens creating this game, I don't I don't really know what I would be doing or what a lot of you at home would be doing. So thank you so much. We're totally excited about having this. So as of right now, the only games with two wins are NBA 2K12 and Portal 2. But there's still a ton of awards on the way, including the big one, Game of the Year. Plus there's Best Action Adventure Game and the Viewer's Choice Award. You know, the one you decided in G4TV.com's video game deathmatch. We'll reveal the winners when next place Best of 2011 awards continues. Welcome back to X Play's Best of 2011 Award Special. Randy Newman will not perform a musical number this year, or ever. I, can we even afford to say his name on this show? We can't like even afford like Paul Williams' left foot. Wow. Uh, our next batch of hopefuls cater to the adrenaline junkies out there. Here is our list for the best action adventure game: Batman: Arkham City. Surprise! We've spent a lifetime wanting to be Batman, and now, thanks to Rocksteady, we are. L.A. Noir. The department needs heroes. Tremendous attention to period detail and unique mystery-solving gameplay provide the foundation for a classic noir tale. Rayman Origins. 
Michelle Ancel's gorgeous co-op platformer has the perfect blend of challenge and charm. Super Mario 3D Land. Even after over a quarter century, Mario can still surprise us. This is one of the greatest Mario games ever made. Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. Come on, go, go. If globetrotting adventure and death-defying action have a name, it must be Nathan Drake. Why, what'd you think I was gonna say? I am excited to announce the winner of this category, Batman Arkham City. It is the second award of the day. You know, it really seamlessly weaves open world elements with all, all of your favorite characters from the Batman universe. Yeah, in case you didn't notice, I'm totally in love with this game. All right, joining me now is Rocksteady game director Sefton Hill. Sefton, congratulations on this award. Cool, thanks very much. Look, this is a question that I've been wanting to ask you guys for a number of years now because I've loved the two Batman games. Where the hell did you guys come from? <laughs> I mean, it was, for us, you know, we hadn't been around for a long time, but we were just so excited to get the Batman license. And, you know, I think the world really deserved a great Batman game, mm -hmm. so we just wanted to deliver on that. We felt a huge weight of responsibility to do that, mm -hmm. and we were just excited to get to work on Batman. Right, and then Arkham Asylum, obviously you had that level of responsibility, mm. you achieved, and, and really raised expectations. Then you've got this new game. I imagine the pressure was tenfold from what you felt even on, on Asylum, and you've accomplished even more with this game. Yeah, it, it was definitely kind of scary, you know, because <laughs> there was a lot more anticipation. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking from a developer's point of view, you're much more excited to have that anticipation because, like, mm -hmm. you want people to be excited about the game that you're making. I think we tried not to think about it too much because uh -huh. you get kind of paralyzed with, like, are you going to sort of upset people by doing the wrong thing? Mm -hmm. And we felt that a big strength for the first game was just doing what we felt was the best thing we could possibly do for the game. Uh, before we go, anything that you want to say to the fans at home? Uh, you know, people that, that you've, again, provided so much enjoyment for. Anything to say to those guys? Yeah, I mean, I think from everyone at Rocksteady, just want to thank, you know, thank you guys for the support you've given us over the development and everyone being so much behind the decisions that we've made. And really, um, that's what inspires us. You know, like we did a lot of very late nights finishing the game and it really inspired us to see all that support that was out there, you know, that people were waiting for it, were really anticipating it. So thanks very much for that. Right. Well, I include myself in, in that group. So thank you from cool. all of them as well. Great thanks job so on the game. Uh, for now, let's send it uh, back over to Morgan. Thanks, guys. Uh, how about you at home? You want some more winners? Well, I will drop three on you right now. The winner for best racing game is Forza Motorsport 4 for the Xbox 360. Over 500 cars and top gear commentary. What else could you want? Our pick for best gameplay innovation goes to Ubisoft's Rocksmith. Sure, it's not much of a game, but this software can legitimately teach you how to play guitar. And the award for best downloadable content goes to Old World Blues from Fallout New Vegas. There is a toaster hell-bent on world domination. I don't think we need to say much else about that. All right, whether you're in class, traveling, or forced to attend a boring wedding, the best way to pass the time is with handheld games. Sure, you might get dirty looks at the wedding, but those services go on way too long. Here are our picks for best handheld game. Dissidia Duodecim Final Fantasy. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Pokemon Black and White. Professor Layton and the Last Spectre. Super Mario 3D Land. And the winner is Super Mario 3D Land. This game got Adam here to buy a 3DS. Yep. That's how good it is. Some of the X-Play staff have actually said it's their favorite Mario game since Super Mario 64. The 3D works, and it's just pure, simple fun. And while it might seem easy at first, all of that difficulty starts the ramping up with a vengeance. Can't believe it made you buy a 3DS. Mm -hmm. Let's send it over to Blair. Our next category was decided by you, yes, you at home. Over the past month, G4TV.com's video game deathmatch pitted 32 games against each other in a battle royale. It was basically March Madness, but with video games. There were over half a million votes, yes, 500,000 votes, but only one title can take home the Viewer's Choice Award. Here is what went down in the finals. Be merciful, please. 30 of the most amazing games of this year have fallen in battle. Only two remain. 
Assassin's Creed Revelations versus The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. It's one of the closest battles in deathmatch history, and both of these games can be called great, but only one can be called the viewer's choice of 2011. And the winner, as chosen by you guys, is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Yes, now despite an aggressive campaign by Ubisoft, Nintendo's love letter to motion control managed to come out on top. And of course, I'm sure it helped that the Nintendo fan base was enraged that we didn't nominate Skyward Sword for Game of the Year. Enraged. That's a, that, that, that's a nice term. Yeah. It was a close race, but anger always wins in yeah, the end. That's true, that's true. Uh, we've dished out 20 awards so far, but... There's one more to go that there we've is? been talking about the entire show. What could it be, Blair? It's the big one, Adam. Seven games are vying for X-Play's 2011 Game of the Year. So, which will win? The detective story? The epic RPG? The one with singing robots? Find out right after this. Welcome back to X-Play's Best of 2011 special. We have been handing out awards all night, but now it is time for the moment that you have been waiting for. This year's Game of the Year shortlist features an amazing group of titles, and all of them are worth owning. But this is an awards show, and we are not dressed up to give out hugs. The whole point of this show is declaring that one game is better than all the rest. That one is our Game of the Year. Yeah. Batman Arkham City. I figured you could use my help. Rocksteady Studios once again prove themselves worthy to don the mantle of the bat with this astounding sequel. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. It has been an honor. Hundreds of hours of questing and combat combined with a tremendous living world make this the best Elder Scrolls game yet. Gears of War 3. Iron and all pistons, baby. The epic tale of Marcus Phoenix and his fellow cogs comes to a close with a gripping campaign and the best multiplayer in the series. L.A. Noir. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Rockstar's long-awaited tribute to the noir genre did not disappoint with top-notch writing and exceptional new animation technology. Portal 2. I think we can put our differences behind us. A masterpiece of writing and game design, returning to Aperture Science with sheer joy from beginning to end. Saints Row the Third. You're robbing a bank dressed like yourselves. Volition's frenetic open world game with a wicked sense of humor dares to throw all the rules out the window and just let you have fun your way. Super Mario 3D Land. <laughs> This mix of nostalgia and innovation has us loving our 3DSs again, thanks to masterful level design and smart use of 3D. And our 2011 Game of the Year is... Drumroll. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Oh, you were really making them wait for them. Yes, I, I thought it'd be good. Kind of like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay, Bethesda's RPG is huge in scope and infinitely replayable. It does everything right. This was a game that definitely resonated with both of us. Yes, yes. It, I'm still playing it. Here to accept the award is executive producer for Bethesda Game Studios, Todd Howard. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are, this... you, are you finally coming up for air now? We are. It's been a bit of a, of a blur when you finish a project of this size for the whole team. We've been like heads down, pouring ourself, ourselves into this game for like three years. And then you're just kind of relieved and excited to be done. And then the reception has been, uh, it's, it's mind blowing. How many people are playing the game and an award like this, uh, it, it's amazing. Thing. One of the most, I, I, th I think, r remarkable things about the game is the more subtle changes that were quite dramatic, I mean, especially the way that you level up your character, that you're not just throwing numbers at things. It really is just about those perks and you're earning points for doing something in the game. I mean, was, was, it, was that something you were a little bit worried about in terms of reception if it wasn't gonna be as hardcore RPG enough? Not really, no. I mean, that's the type of, type of thing where we feel pretty strongly about it, and we're, we're able to play the game and know this is this is a good flow, um, and ultimately it's it's the gameplay and having those kind of systems and perks and stats that affect the gameplay. You know, again, we we make the game that that we really want to play. So you know, we there were times where we played it and remember this isn't fun, so we changed it. So. And, and there are actual creation tools that, that we're going to be able to see, so people will be able to sort of explore that themselves. Yeah, we are going to be releasing the uh, creation kit for, uh, for the PC users, um, and they'll be able to make their own stuff, share it. Uh, we're doing this cool stuff on Steam with that, 
and um, that's going to be rolling out in January, and it's just we're super excited about it. our PC audience. There are like our original fans and the stuff they create. It's just it's it's awesome even for us to play. So uh, not so much uh, what's next for you in terms of games, but when you finish a game like this, and you and your team finish a game that you've been working on for so many years, it was just so big. What do you do? I mean, do, do, do you just sip a Mai Tai? I mean, how, how do you decompress from experience like this? Uh, I think everybody does it. You know, we, we kind of, like, we have our 10-step process for re-entering society. Um, <laughs> it's very, uh, it's pretty weird. I actually went to a grocery store and realized I hadn't been to a grocery store in, like, seven months. Wow. And I was like, look at all this stuff. Holy <laughs> crap, is everybody, it was kind of like you get this weird, because you're just in the office staring at the game, trying to figure out how to make it better, and make chips. it work, <laughs> doing whatever. So it's, uh, it's, I think it's different for everybody, but it's, it's a bit surreal. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I, I guess you've been staring at the game for the past three years, and I think everyone else will, will be doing the same for the next three years, and who knows, even more. Todd, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. So Thanks for the game. award. I mean, oh, all the support no. you guys have given us at X-Play and G4, uh, we're just blown away. Thank you. All right. All right, here is a look at what is coming up on X-Play. Next week, we'll finish the year with a bang. We've got two days of Star Wars The Old Republic launch coverage, including mind-blowing cinematics from the game. Plus, don't miss our Year in Game special with a look at Diablo 3 and the biggest gaming moments of 2011. So there you have it, X-Play's Best of 2011. That was a lot of good games. And a lot of varied and, and I, games. And I think yes. we should definitely say we want to say like congratulations to all of the winners, but also congratulations to all of the developers and everyone who worked on any of the games that were nominated because they all had something really special and great about right. them. And truly any one of those games could have won. Like Skyrim was amazing, but Bruce yes. Wayne had a really crappy childhood. It would have been nice to see Batman win that thing. <laughs> I think he money. That. That's a good point, Adam. That's a very good point. Yes, you're right. But uh, he was still suffering. You know, I would have been very happy to see Portal 2 win Game of the Year. I mean, right. there were so many great options. Obviously, big Skyrim fan. There's no question about sure. that. But I'm, I'm, I'm also glad a couple that I think had maybe had not been as strong on the radar. Uh, Saints Row the Third, which yes. I think is just a phenomenal wake-up call. That came sometimes, out of nowhere. sometimes you can just have fun. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other, um, L.A. Noir, which is a game that was you know, qu quite a while ago and really did do a lot of new and different things that I think, uh, I hope, a lot of companies will pay attention to. That really was the theme of 2011. It was a year of people doing different things, mm -hmm. and as you can tell by our list of nominees, it really did pay off this year. Yeah, that's it exciting. Did. It actually did. Yeah. There's a there's a 3D game in the list. Yes. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? And <laughs> we're already looking it? forward to next year when there's a ton more great games coming out. We'll, of course, tell you all about those when they do. Yep. But for now, congratulations to all of our winners and all of our nominees. Thanks for watching X-Play. G4TV.com has more than 30,000 searchable videos created by and for gamers with the latest game trailers, reviews, and previews. Gamers say G4TV.com delivers the best gaming news and event coverage. G4TV.com, the most trusted video game website. Yeah, really.